Howdy! How's everybody out there in YouTube land today? I'm starting a series here about how to use sawdust to make something pretty and something creative and something useful and um, how to put use to a product that's generally just thrown out that is extremely useful. And this is all thanks to my friend Shelly Cole over at Know What Mom Knows. And you will find the URL to her channel in the description of the video. She has come up with this product and she's offering, you know, the how to make this free of charge. Um, and it is an all natural product or you can add other things to it and it won't be natural. You know, that's up to you on what you want to do. But um, I'm going to walk you through here in the first episode of this showing you a little bit about how to make this, explain this to you. You use sawdust and glue and you have to have like a specially formal, formulated glue in order to make it work, but it's a simple glue. It just takes a little bit of work in order to make it. Now, there's two different glues that she makes, and this is the one that I'm going to be talking about primarily. This is called stone glue. It's the name she's give to it. And you make this with some simple ingredients, water, sugar, and flour regular all-purpose flour, granulated sugar, and water. Just your three basic ingredients here. And I'll tell you how to make this. You take a bowl and you put in that bowl 16 tablespoons of flour, 16 tablespoons of sugar, and 16 tablespoons of water. She suggests using distilled water, but you can use tap water. And you stir that up, mix it all till it's totally mixed up. Then you're going to take a heavy bottomed pan, saucepan. You're going to put two cups of water in that saucepan. You're going to get you a fine mesh strainer and set it over top of that water in that pan. And you're going to strain out the flour mixture that you just mixed up into the water that's in the pan. You're going to set the burner underneath the pan on a medium heat. And you're going to bring that up, that water mixture with your flour and sugar and stuff in it up to a um, simmer. You don't want it at a rolling boil, but you're going to want to see a simmer out of it. Just, you know, light um, little bubbles. You're going to take your timer and set your timer to 12 minutes. 12 minutes. You're going to take your wire whisk and you're going to constantly stir that mixture for that 12 minutes. Don't stop. Just keep stirring. I don't care what it looks like. You just keep stirring. For 12 minutes, you stir the bejeebers out of that mixture. At the end of 12 minutes, when your timer goes off, take it off that burner. Turn your burner off. You set your pan over to the side. Let it cool down a little bit. Then you're going to pour it into a mason jar. On your mason jar while that stuff's hot. Just take your paper towel, wet it with a little water, put it over the top of the jar, set it in the refrigerator, and let this stuff cool down. Now, Shelly also refers to this as her gravy glue because it will resemble gravy, and it even coagulates itself because of the flour in it um, to look like cold gravy. Once it's all cool, then you can put a lid on it. When you're ready to make your, she calls this product sawdusto, um, and when you're ready to make, your sawdust mixture you take a half a cup of the sawdust or of the uh, stone glue and you add your uh, one cup of sawdust to that let me say that again because i stumbled a little bit half a cup of glue to one cup of the sawdust now this is a fine sawdust you can use different grades of sawdust it, you, you can get it even um that uh, is real thick or in between the fine and the thin but you kind of match it to whatever product you're going to make. And if you're going to do something rather small, you're probably going to want to use fine sawdust. Okay. You put that in a bowl, half a cup of glue to one cup of sawdust. You put it in a bowl. There's a bowl. You put it in there and you put on your rubber gloves and you just start kneading it and working it and kneading it, and working it and kneading it. And just until it just gets into kind of a ball. Then, I separated mine out. Let me move some of this off to the side and I'll show you what I did here. Once I got it all mixed up there into a ball, I separated it out into four sections. 
and then I added my colorant to it. Now, you can use spices, you can use uh, all different kinds of things, flower petals and all that in order to make your own dyes, natural dyes. I use mica. Mica is made from stone and it, so that's a natural um, colorant. And then when you do that, you're going to just knead the dickens out of this stuff. Just it, make it like a Play-Doh. Just keep working it and working it until it's smooth. Now this isn't quite as smooth as I would like to have it, but it's, it's going to be suitable to do what I want to do. You don't want it crumbly. It will start out kind of crumbly when you add your uh, color it to it, but you and you don't want that. You want it so that it's holding together real good and it gets smooth. And this is pretty smooth. I mean, it, it's you know, it's showing a little bit of cracking to it, but it's not too bad. How much color do you use? However much you need to get the color you want. I used oh about a half a teaspoon, I would say, to each ball of this that I made up. Um, if it didn't, if it needed a little bit more, if it wasn't quite uh, taken all through it, then I'd add a little bit more. Okay, so that's how you do that. That's how you make the product, and it is time consuming. It, it took me a couple hours, uh, at, and that's with the glue already made. You know, just mixing the glue and the sawdust and kneading it up and adding the colorant and all that. Um, it took me a couple hours to do this. So you know, it's not going to be a quick, simple project. Let me knock this out in five minute thing. All right. I've got some belt buckle blanks here. Let me move some of this up here so that I get this where you can see it. Belt buckle blanks. These are metal belt buckle blanks. You can get them any place. They sell craft supplies. And I've got three of them laid out here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some of this in here. And we're going to need a little bit of glue out of this jar in order to lay this in. So, I mean, th this is glue. You can use this for all different kinds of things. All right. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't have to be just to mix the sawdust in. You're going to use it to glue it into your, glue your projects into whatever you want to put them in or whatever you want to do with it. And this is cold because it's been in the refrigerator. So I've got to warm it up here, work it a little bit. Anybody that's done any crafts on anything cold, anything cold knows that you kind of have to work it to warm it up, loosen it up a little bit. Say it doesn't take much warmth from my fingers is easy it right there into that belt buckle blank. But this is a fun project. This is something I've, I've had a lot of people tell me in my videos on the comments that uh, they like to do crafts with their kids and they love to try some of the new things that I show them with the kids. And this would be a great thing to do with the kids because it's an all natural product. There's nothing in this going to hurt anybody. And uh, I'm just going to take this and just push it right into the blank, right in there to into the glue. I'm using the black. This is going to be my background color. The kids will have a lot of fun, especially, you know, if you get some paprika, you know, and put it in for color, uh, some turmeric for your yellow. Um, just, you know, use, use different spices and stuff that you got there in the kitchen to put your colors in. Some cinnamon for some brown. And see, I'm just going to keep pressing this in until it gets just nice and smooth. Keep rubbing it out. It's not going to be a quickie project, so just use your patience. But I can see this as being a product that uh, will catch on, you know, especially people that if you don't have a lot of money to do your crafts and stuff with. You can make all kinds of stuff. And I've got a couple other ideas on things that I'm going to be making this week with this to show you the versatility of it.
I mean, you can even make furniture out of this. It's wood, for goodness sakes. It's made from, from sawdust. And you got a little bit too much glue in there. You just rake it out, put it on your paper towel. And add a little bit more of your product. It's just stuff that you normally got in your kitchen. I think about everybody has flour and sugar and water in your kitchen. And then you go get the sawdust. Anybody that does woodworking will have sawdust. Now, Shelly goes into a little more uh, detail on her channel about this. There's some sawdust that are a little better than others to use, um, I believe. Now, I could be mistaken about this. I think she says that pine is one that you probably don't want to use uh, because of the resins and stuff in the pine. But, uh, you know, most of your... Sawdust is going to work up pretty good. You don't want to use anything from MDF, you know, because MDF has a lot of, of uh, chemicals and stuff in it. You want natural as possible. I mean, not that it's really going to hurt anything overall. Uh, it's just, you know, why, why use chemicals when you don't have to? Now, you can paint this, you know, if you make something and you decide, well, I don't like that color or I want to, paint a design on it or you know whatever it is you want to do you can paint it you can drill it you can engrave it um I, I, I when she sent me some samples of it i put it through a test and you know let's just see what this stuff can do so i just messed with it and i found that it was extremely versatile to use you can make all kinds of embellishments out of it jewelry furniture now I'm smoothing this out as smooth as I can get it here. Rubbing my finger back and forth across. Now I'm wearing rubber gloves, so I'm not gonna, you know, Michael will stain, and so I don't want to get that stain all over my hands. And so just rubbing it out, and if it's coming over the edge a little bit, you know, you just kind of rub it off the edge and put it down there on the paper towel. Make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies on it. Now I'm going to take a spatula to smooth it. It's a little smoother than my fingers now that I got it worked in real good and got it soft. Just kind of like icing a cake, you know, if you want to get your icing real smooth before you're going to put your lettering and stuff on it you know you just take your spatula and you just smooth it out real good it's the same basic concept i'm just kind of rubbing it down rub all the excess off the top make it level Knife off good. Okay, let me set that down. I'm going to get a paper towel here. Wipe the gloves off a little bit. All right, now straighten that around a little bit. We still have a nice chunk of that black left. Side. See, it's kind of crumbly. I'll be working that back in together when I 
get back to the black on it. Okay, set that off to the side. Now, I'm going to do a little, I like a little flower design in here. And I think purple flower would be pretty on this. So, we'll take, let's, let's roll that up into a little ball if we can here. Let's see where that works. Well, goodness gracious. Pinch me up a little piece here. Roll it up. It reminds me of when he's a little kid and played patty cake. <laughs> patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Roll them up, roll them up, best you can. Yeah. Just pinch little pieces of that off to, to make a little flower design. Be helpful if my gloves wasn't hanging off the ends of my fingers there. Little flower petals. It's a little much, I think. Take a little of that off of there. Now you could just do that on the desktop and then or on the silicone mat, you know, and then scrape it up to put it on if you wanted to make a special shape out of your leaves or your petals as long as they're somewhat petal shaped is all i'm really after here it's not rocket science you can put some little indentation there shape them up it's kind of a little violet we got going and put another little flower up here Another little teeny pinch of it. Roll it up. Put another little petal in there. Since this is all wet and I'm kind of pushing it down into the black, I don't really need any more glue to hold it. It's going to take few days for it to cure. I'm not going to put this in an oven and, you know, try and dry it that way. I'm not in any big hurry, so we're just going to let it sit to the side and let it cure on its own. And once it's all cured, then you can seal it. Shelly uses... Um, shellac like they use on jelly beans when she seals hers because it's natural um i don't have any problem personally using krylon or varnish to seal a piece like this because it's not something that will be going in anybody's mouth so that but if you want all natural you know you would go with the Food grade shellac. Now we're going to put some little marks in our little petals, make them look a little more realistic. And I think we could probably even do another one or two on here. Take my palette knife and just kind of shape them around the way I want them shaped. Sculpt them up. If you think they're standing up a little bit much, then you push them down a little more. I mean, you know, it's up to you. It's your design. You figure out how you want them to look. 
Now I'm going to put it around that way. I've got a little room down here. I'll put a little flower down here on this end. Try to hold it so you can see what I'm doing here. Pinch off a little bit. Push it in there. It's like a little field of violets. It's a one of a kind. Nobody will ever have another piece exactly like it. Okay, now we're going to want to take just a little teeny tiny pinch of yellow and put in the centers. Which is easier said than done. And we're going to little teeny tiny pieces here. Just kind of defines where your flowers are and gives them a little more definition, adds a little bit of color to them. You can get mica in all different colors. And um, there's, just look it up on the internet, M-I-C-A, it's called mica, and you'll find it. There's different places that sell it, usually places that sell soap supplies will sell mica. You probably get it off of Amazon. Most everything's on Amazon these days. Come on. He's going to try to give me grief. Let's get up there in the center. There we go. Check off any little extra pieces there. Now we got a little green here. We could add just a little bit of green and make some like little stems or leaves. Yeah. It's like playing with Play-Doh. It's a little drier than what Play-Doh is. A little more crumbly, but you can add a little bit more glue to it if you don't want it that crumbly. This is a pretty good texture that I'm working with right here, so I'm pretty pleased. I'm just going to kind of rub that in, out into looking like leaves surrounding the, the flowers. You could even add some beads in this if you wanted to add beads. Those seed beads would be cute added to it. Centers of the flowers and around the edges put, put you in a little seed bead border. And you might ask, Brenda, what are you going to do with all the rest of that that's out there? Well, I've got a couple more belt buckle blanks over here. I'm going to use some more of it in them. And then I'll be recording my next couple of videos and showing you how I use the rest of it up. Put a little 
little leaf in here. See, I just take my knife and I make my little veins in my my leaves using the knife. Shape it the way you want it shaped. And then take your knife, put your veins in. Look it over and see what else I want to add to it. Maybe a couple more leaves. I don't want it to look real busy, but I want it to look like it's filled up. Once you get your design down, and just kind of press it down. Make sure it's all pressed down real good, because it's going to dry however you've got it. And put it in just like that. And there it is. My little belt buckle blank that I did up with my violets on it. You can, since this is just glue, you just take a wet paper towel and wipe off the back and the sides of it if you got any residue on it. Clean it up good. So there's one. We'll set that back out of the way there. Now, I think this one I will do a little bit different. Let's take Well, before we do that, let's put glue down. That'd be the best thing to do. Like some of my glue out of the container. Put it down there. My coagulated glue. Flour, sugar, and water. Warm it up here with my hands. But you can put any kind of design in there you want to put in. Just keep pressing on that, warming it up, filling up the blank so we have a base for the sawdust mixture. And we go putting it in there. If the weather was a little warmer or it was a little warmer in this room, this would be going a little bit faster. It's cold in here, so it's taking a little bit to warm this up good, but it's not doing too bad under the circumstances. Boy, I'm waiting for spring. Man, oh man. Okay, so here we've got a background laid in on that. We'll take a little chunk of this green and let's warm it up. Rolling it up. Now, kind of press it out a little bit here in my hands. Make it a little flatter. Now you can roll it out, use a rolling pin. Idea here. We'll move this off to the side just a little bit. Get this down here on the 
silicone, use your brayer. And just roll it up. Okay. Roll it out like that. You got a nice flat piece. Now I'm just going to go to laying pieces of it in my belt buckle blank. Since it is glue, it's sticking to my brayer, of course. You could, uh, you can spray it with a little bit of uh, vegetable spray to keep it from sticking. There, we kind of pressed it out flat. Now, I'm just going to lay this in here. Just two chunks. I mean, I just find it amazing that this is made with sawdust, you know. It looks like something that you would go to the store and buy, you know, some kind of a putty compound play doughy type sculpty mixture, whatever you want to call it. Now, we've got some green laid in there. Let's take a little bit of this black and do the same thing. I'm going to put it off to the side here on the mat. Take the brayer. I'm just going to rub it with the brayer. Flatten it out. You can use a rolling pin to do the same thing. Now, I'm going to take my knife. Just scraping that off the brayer. Yeah, and then we'll just lay some pieces of it in here and there on it. And I will take this opportunity to say that Shelly is running a competition right now with this uh, product. Where you intermix some of it up, make something out of it. She's got a group on Facebook that gives all the information there on how to enter, do a video, and uh, show people how to use the product. And follow her directions there, and she'll uh, enter you in the contest. She's got some prizes and stuff she's offered. Okay, so we did a little black with the green. This is just going to kind of be a little speckle. There's no, no set uh, rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. It's just going to be a pretty belt buckle made with sawdust and a bunch of different colors. Let's take some purple here. Lavender, whatever color you want to call this. I call it purple. And scrape it loose there with the knife. Now, you just put some pieces of it here and there on it. Just speckle it. You design it up however you want it to, to look. Oops. Wherever I see a, an empty spot where there's glue, uh, I'm putting a little dab of the purple in there. Use whatever colors you want to use. 
You can do it patriotic with red, white, and blue. <laughs> Make garden designs with whatever colors you want to use for that. And I, I'm, I've got a method to my madness here. This is one that you're probably going to see again in another video down the road. So don't be surprised if you see this one again because I have some other ideas that's going to be used on this. This is going to be the background for something else that I'm doing. So don't look at it and say, oh, she's just making a mess because it's not. It's part of a design, but it's not all going to be in this video. But you're seeing how I fill in the, the belt buckle blank. It's laid on a bit of that stone glue and it's going to have to firm up and dry up good. We're going to take a pinch of this yellow too. Doesn't have to be much, just a little bit. Okay. Roll that out on that brayer too. And you put it, put this between the glue mixture between couple sheets of plastic wrap and roll them out then you could get it off in one sheet if you wanted to do it that way but that's not what I'm after here I'm just kind of breaking that up and moving it around I want it to be kind of speckly a little here and a little there Now, we've got it all in there and mashed down, and there's too much material there. It's kind of hanging out over the edges. So what we're going to do is take our knife and smooth it out. It's going to come over the edge, so we're going to cut a little bit of it off there. That's fine. Smooth it out as much as you can. I don't know if there's any knife collectors out there, but if there are, you've probably seen um, knife handles, folding knife handles made of a product they call end-of-day celluloid. And it, from back in the old days when they was putting celluloid handles together for knives at the end of the day there'd be a whole bunch of extra celluloid laying around little bits of this and little bits of that and so they just mix them together and they make a few knife handle blanks out of what they called end of day celluloid and that was some of the prettiest stuff in my opinion and that's kind of what this is just little bits of this and little bits of that put together See how that's coming along? Now we're going to scrape down the sides, get all the excess scraped off. A little place there that needs smoothed down a little bit more, so we'll smooth it out. Your sculpting tools are going to come in handy for this product.
Get it just the way you want it. And that's looking pretty good to me right there. It's almost a camouflage. Just as it is. Kind of a camouflage look to that. Then, since that turned out so good, I kind of want to do that again. Let's take a little bit of glue out of our jar and put in our blank here. Warm it up with your hand, smooshing it in, warming it up, spreading it out. Probably way more glue than needs to be in there, but we'll smush some of that out of there as we go. All to the edges. Make sure it's all filled in good. Okay. Smush her in. Hey, we got that in there now. We've got some little pieces left over here. From where I was working on that other one, we're just going to put catch as catch can in there. This will sort of be our end of day celluloid <laughs> deal right here. It's just whatever's laying here because it's the last buckle that I've got up here on the table to work on. And we'll do that again. Tetch, tetch, more purple, you know, that's one of my words, tetch. My granny used to say that when I was a kid. Give me a tetch of this and a tetch of that. <laughs> Scrape it off there into the belt buckle and just move it around. Press it in. Some of that glue is going to squish out, and that's fine. I had way too much in there anyway, so that's all going to work out. be interested to see what Shelly has to say about my little endeavors that I'm going to do this week with this. I mean, you could get intricate with this and make little designs, you know, to place in it. If you want to do it that way. I'm more of a freestyler, especially on tiny projects like this. I have to freestyle it a little bit. Now we need just a little bit of yellow put in there. Oops. 
little bits of color here and there in it. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a frog in my throat. Make sure you get it filled up good. <coughs> mm. Little too full is fine because we can scrape off whatever we don't need. Fighting a sneeze. I feel a sneeze coming on. I don't want to do that on camera. Let's see, we just keep smoothing it out there, filling in any any blank spots that need a little filling. Scrape off whatever the overflow is on it. So you see that I did one that was rather intricate there with the flowers and it it was real easy to do. And then I've got one that looks kind of camo. And I got this one. Get the light to it there so you can see it. I haven't got it smoothed out real good yet. But you see what the colors are there. Some of all four of the colors that I've been using. want the top of it to be just really smooth. So I'll keep going over it until I get it just the right texture that I want. When it's done, you can always sand it a little bit if you want to. If it doesn't suit you as far as smoothness, but I find that when it's wet, it's easier to work with it here. You can get most of the imperfections smoothed out. Real easy. Okay. That's looking real good to me right there. But like I say, you could do designs, you know, uh, you see where I did this one. It's got the flowers on it there. You can do designs like that. Um, you could do uh, geometrics. You could make a American flag. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do. But now you haven't seen the last of this. I kind of like this one as a, a camouflage. But you have not seen the last of this one. This is one that I will use for my other project that I have in mind. But they're going to have to sit and cure. And uh, I'll show you what I do with that in an upcoming video this week. So with all that being said, I know what mom knows. Do you? Check out everything there in the description of the video. I've got all my URLs down there. That uh, shows the Etsy shop that's got all kinds of art. It shows my Patreon channel my Twitch channel, Instagram, the uh, uh, Twitter, all that's listed down there. My email's down there. If you need to get in touch with me that way, you can leave comments on my videos. Please be sure and give a thumbs up on this video and share it around to all your friends so they can see how to be crafty too. And remember, Brenda's crafty. Be like Brenda.